All right, this is my Nurture Ride 360. I have used it once before, and I got a reasonable hatch, I think, using um, shipped eggs. From those shipped eggs, I've now grown my own breeders out, and I'm going to now hatch some eggs from my breeders. Of course, they're free, so it's regardless of the hatch rate, it won't cost me, you know, 60, 70 bucks to get the eggs. So what I'm going to do is there'll be some shots back and forth here as I uh, show you what is all involved in it. So this is just the basic incubator. I'm going to take the top off, show you what goes inside. This is the inside without the turner. So I want you to see kind of how it's put together. These are water fill trays. The one on the left is what you're going to fill uh, when you're just running the first 14 days for quail eggs of the hatch. On day 14, you go into lockdown through day 17. And you'll use this one labeled B. Now I want to show you what they fill because a lot of these um videos don't show you what you're doing with that so if you take this cover off which you can this center section here is what a is filling up so it's not a ton of water and you're only trying to maintain about a 45 to 50 percent humidity max on that now when you go into lockdown on day 14 you can increase it to 60 to 65 percent and filling through here you're now filling this whole section out here so you can see it's substantially more water and the way humidity works in an incubator is not based on the depth of the water it's based on the amount of surface area because the more surface area you have the more evaporation you'll have all right so you'll fill the little A up and it like me if you want when you start you can just go ahead and fill this up before you get everything going okay and put your tray back down after you fill the water up in the center either using this or taking this uh, flat tray off and filling it from there the next thing you're going to want to do is put your egg turner in now what I want to show you is when you buy the 360 it comes with a chicken egg turner now you can use this set it on there Is this thing not going on here you can use the chicken egg turner if you want to save a few dollars um, the thing is made to hold 45 quail eggs the quail turner and you can get I don't know 30 in there or so but they're gonna roll around on top of each other and it's not as nice so I went ahead when I bought this I also bought a quail egg turner so I had the proper equipment to begin with this will hold 45 eggs I put 60 in and just put the other eggs on top and the reason I say that is if you order 50 eggs from most of the better egg sellers they're gonna send you 60 okay this won't hold 60 so I just you know set the 45 in and then put the extra 15 on top I uh, don't know if that had any negative effect. I don't think it did. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like when you have your turner in. And now we're ready to put the top on and turn it on. All right, with the top on, there are two little tabs that you have to line up. One on the front, doesn't focus very well. And one in the rear and I can't get back there with the camera so you'll just have to believe me okay so you get that set on there 
The other thing you want to do is initially, this is a uh, humidity release. In initially, you're going to want to have it at about half until you get a good reading. And, uh, and I'll show you what that is. Once you get it set up, I'm going to wind up taking it back off to show you something else. But you'll plug it in. Now the egg turner itself, let's see if I can show you these things. The egg turner is a part of the system. It's already there. The egg turner, you can see on the back here, there's a spot for the egg turner and the power supply. So the egg turner, which is connected to the incubator, gets plugged in. And then the power supply, which is down here, you plug that in and it will run the power to both the egg turner and the incubator. So when you plug it in, you're immediately going to get a beep. Now this is what it looks like when you first turn it on. You're getting a temperature reading and you're getting a humidity reading. Generally speaking, these things tend to be off uh, by, you know, one or two percent or one or two degrees. And so you're going to need to check it before you set the eggs in there. I typically run the incubator for 48 hours before I set eggs. And what I'm going to use to check it will be this Govi humidity and temperature thermometer or whatever it's called. I think it's a thermometer. I got the idea for the Govi. I've used others, but my Shire Farms highly recommended the Govi. They thought it was the most sensitive. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that. And of course, you're going to want to do this before you get set up. I'm going to set the Govi in here so I can get a reading. Now, the heating element is directly under this. So I set the uh, Govi further out on the edge because I want to make sure that, that the heat on the outer edge is as close to 99.5 as possible. Yes, it'll be a tad hotter right in the center. That's just the nature of using these less expensive incubators. Uh, I used to have a GQF Sportsman. It was almost $1,000. Uh, it did a magnificent job. It would uh, hatch up to 1,300 eggs. I'm not doing anything near that this time. So if you're just like me and you're just raising a few quail for eggs and meat, uh, this incubator isn't a bad option. I may do a video on others in the future, we'll have to see. So anyway, you're going to set the Govi in there. And what I would do initially is I would run a test, and I'm going to show you how to do that, on the turner to make sure the turner is working. And then I would unplug the turner so the Govi will stay in view until I get ready to set the eggs, and then I'll plug the turner back in. Okay, I've got the Govi in. Everything is still running. It's still plugged in the back. So what I'm going to do now, I, you probably can't see it, but on the top there's a quick menu. Egg turning, it says press both the plus and the minus at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to press both the plus and the minus at the same time. I think... Okay, I've got it in front of me. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to unplug the turner because all I want it to do now is just sit there and heat up. And I want this temperature to get up to um, 99.5. Now, when I used it previously, I was down in my basement, which is a little cooler. And so I'm not, I brought it up this time because it's, uh, we're on January 3rd, 2023. Uh, I don't want the temperature variations uh, even from the basement, which is pretty steady around 60 degrees, but I want to make sure I, I have a better hatch rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the menu. I'm going to hold it for three seconds. You'll hear it beep. Okay, and you can see I had it at 102. I'm going to drop it 
to 101 and see where that brings me okay hit to uh, menu again just cycle it through there's a day count all right so it's set for 101 and right now the temperature is at 91.5 it's showing in there if I show you here I don't know if you can see it yes right now I'm at 79 uh, on the interior you just see it went up to 80 it's showing me that I'm at 95 but it's reading the temperature right under the heat rings so let this run for a couple of hours see where you get right now it's telling me my humidity is at 57 and I'm showing 69 percent so all of this will settle out in about an hour and I'll come back and shoot a little more video to show you where we are at that point well folks an hour ago uh, I was reading I think something in the 80s as far as temperature goes now I'm at 98.5 and the humidity inside was uh, was showing about 8 degrees difference 8% difference with what's showing on the nurture right uh, screen so now we're reading at 98 and 48 and the nurture right is at 101 and 49 so this is at 630 we'll check back in in about another hour and see how close we are or if it's stabilized and I need to do something with the temperature it appears to me the humidity is reading correctly all right folks two hours have passed since my last little clip here and just to let you know what I've done I moved the heat up to 102.5 because it wasn't getting to 99.5 where I needed it and the humidity got a little low so I closed this up but now at 58 percent it's only one percent off you can see that's pretty good there but that's a little too high I wanted it around 50 so I'm going to open it back up to half and you can see now I'm at 99.4.5 okay that's where I'm supposed to be it can fluctuate between there and 100 and it'll be fine so I'm going to check it again in the morning and see where we are and uh, and if I have to move it up another half degree I will one other thing I want to show you is when a, something I never did before was candle my eggs. And if you don't know what candling is, at day 14, uh, that's when I would do it, I'll candle the eggs to see if they were actually fertile and, and the egg was growing. Uh, this does a great job. This, just so you know, has a candler option. You can see that light. However, it doesn't work very well when you put the egg in there. Not as well as you would like. This, once again, another Myshire Farms recommendation. This was great. And uh, clearly showed whether the egg was fertile or not. That doesn't mean it's going to hatch, but it does tell you whether or not an embryo is growing in there. So that's it for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and put this video out on the setup. And the next thing I'll, I'll be showing you is placing the eggs in it, and we'll get going. See you then.